All right, New Jack crew, we're going to get straight into this next episode without wasting no time. Now, we're going to pick it up from the next day after I ask Skinny to get me that weapon. Let's get started. When I say wake up, you say get to it. Wake up. Get, get to, to it. it. All right, listen up. We got some new inmates coming in, and I don't want you to say a goddamn thing to them. Wow, bust your head wide the hell open. We wake up this morning, C.O. Crawford comes in, and he informs us he got some new inmates coming in, and we not to say a word to them. All right, bring your hands right on down here, and let's rock down this way. Let's go, let's go. Now, when they finally get to our unit, they come in with five inmates. When the last inmate come in, we see he beat the hell up. He beat up so bad, his face warped. Oh. Say, cuz, oh, how you get beat up like that? Shut your motherfucking mouth for What the hell you gonna do about it? Now, everybody wondering how he get beat up, but Red Reed just opened his mouth and asked him. Just for opening your goddamn mouth, I'm putting you on shit detail. Now, for those of you who don't know what shit detail is, it's for the guys who work out in the field, and when the horses ride around dropping shit, they gotta go behind him and pick it up. So he assigned those guys they sell. He do his roll call, then he dismiss everybody. Say, you know what? Come here, man. What hey, up, bro? why you put your towel on top of my shit, man? You tripping, boy. I ought to break your man, face, boy. Man. Now, this was the day I first met Big Cliff. I'm in the cell brushing my teeth, and I hear Big Cliff get into it with Nathaniel B. Now, I told y'all about Nathaniel B and catch and release. Man, you ain't got to be hailing me all like that, bro. A stupid talk, man. I go boo the talk. What? Boo. Oh. 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 Oh God, oh God. Man, Big Cliff just rocked the shit out of Nathaniel B. But this situation ain't over. Remember Big Cliff and Nathaniel B. Now those who have heard it, they know what Nathaniel B is known for. So after that situation, I head back to my cell, finish doing what I was doing, and I head out to go find Skinny. Whoa, what up Skinny, babe? Hold on, hold on, hold on, who the hell you is? You ain't just about to walk up on Skinny like that. Nah, uh -uh, he cool as hell. Come on, let him through. That's G, I been knowing G. What's up, Skinny? What up, G? Man, look, what's up with your bitches, man? They cutting up. But anyway, look, man, I just come to see if you got that, man. I ain't trying to take up no more of your time. Straight down to business, huh? You know I got that for you. Oh, man, I appreciate that. You my boy. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Let me grab that for you. Hold on, hold on, huh? Huh. Put that, wrap that up and so. Oh, skinny, that bitch nice. Man, I appreciate that. I got your account information. I'm going to get back with you, though. So after I get that nice-ass weapon from Skinny, I grab that, duck that off, and start heading back to my unit. Hey, say, Ron, come here right quick. Man, I'll let you, man. Now, I'm heading back to my unit, cutting through F block day room, and some dude holler, hey, Ron, come here, let me holler at you. But I ain't paying him no attention. I'm keeping on about my business. Hey, so what you, hit me the daddy? Huh? Man, I was yeah, calling what you. Is, homie. I ain't running from you, nigga. I'm just minding my business. So what it is? Man, what that mean you got, bro? What that is? What the f*** wrong with you, huh? Huh? Man, oh, huh? Man, oh, oh, get your ass, oh, nigga. Oh. Man, this old black ass dude tried to go in my pocket and take what I had. And you see how that turned out. So I did what I had to do to protect myself and caught flight back to my unit. Now, as I'm running back to my unit, I passed Weldon on K. They got Weldon fully turned out, dressed all the way down in drag. Boy, I got her and her mama on lock. Man, Every dude, time man, I hit him, man, they just smoke yeah, me some yeah, shit in the show. As soon as I get back to the unit, I see Nathaniel creeping by Big Cliff's cell. He in there talking to somebody. Whatever Nathaniel had in his hand, he just threw it in the cell and the bitch just exploded. <laughs> now the sad thing about this, dudes running out there on fire, Big Cliff had to dive out the cell so he didn't even get burnt. But the other dudes who ain't had nothing to do with it, they on fire running all over the place burning up. <laughs> even made it here to put these dudes out. Sergeant Kraft coming here hooping and hollering, talking about he need to know what happened. So the fire squad get here, put them dudes out. They wrap that situation up. Now we gonna fast forward this up to after noon child. Bring your ass up here. Oh, Stand up straight. Oh, I bet you on this roll call. Oh, oh. Come on. Get 
your ass in there. So everybody out chilling, doing whatever it is they do. Then Sergeant Kraft, he come back in with the inmate from cell number eight that he took off for missing roll call. This dude beat up. He breathing crazy. He got pus bumps on him. Look like he been burned with some water or something. But yet, look like this man ain't had no medical attention. But you throw him back in a whole different cell. So after he throw that man in the cell, he leave out. Man, you can't do it like that, man. That's my book right there, man. Man. Nah, man, I ain't even playing that, bro. Man, I've been sitting here watching y'all, man. That Freeman book, bro. Who you is? Is Chili or something, nigga? You know what? I don't even want to play with y'all no more, man. I'm done. I'm a nigga that been watching the game, man. You just get mad because that man whooping your ass. Go bro. ahead then, nigga. Hey, man, you want to play, man? Come take your place, man. So some inmates get into an argument over some cars, Freeman and that. But another inmate named Ricky keep chiming in. And he taking Freeman's side. So that got mad and quit. Boy, yeah, that nigga just oh, oh, back. Oh, Man, I don't even get it. These dudes went back to playing cards like everything was over. I'm sitting right there watching Thad go in his cell and get his weapon. Thad come right back out there, hit Ricky up, Freeman take off running. Yeah, don't worry about it, boy. I'm going to get you. I'm going to catch you, though. I promise I'm going to catch you. Now, I'm noticing something about this prison. Seems like when shit pop off, everybody get hit up, but the dude they trying to hit up. Now, I'm going to fast forward this up about two hours later. Jesus. Whoa, what up, man? What it do? Man, come in. Let me holler at you about something. So, I'm just chilling outside my cell when out of nowhere, a male come through and say he need to holler at me about something. Say, I'm with you, Check this out, G. Look, man, the other day, man, I got into it with this old lame-ass nigga, you heard me? Man, I feel better if you come through and watch my back. Yeah, I got my rounds, bro, but I know what you would do. I gotta get that old boy, man. He thinking the shit old boy, but I won't go through there and bust him up right quick, man. Lead the way, nigga. My dog, bro. I roll with Mel to go see what's poppin'. Man, let me put 30 on that fight, boy. Oh, bro, I won't man. get in on that. Who you won't bet on? You won't bet on KT? Boy, I'm gonna put you in with your pussy yeah, ass now. Man, come on, man. Me and you right now. We're gonna get your head down. What's that? What's that? I got my what dog. Do, man. What it do? You got your rounds. What's that? I bet. Stop yeah, all talking then, nigga. Come on. Yeah, all right. Let's yeah. go. Bam, oh, bam. Okay. Look at it. Right. Look at right. it. Bam, bam, bam. Boom. Oh. Oh, it ain't no stopping now. Oh, what's happening now? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you chill out put him down. Watch out, Mel. So Mel and the dude in the blender, and Mel hit the dude and dislocated his shoulder. Then Mel want to start showboating. Dude went in his mouth, got a razor blade, pulled it out, and slashed Mel across his face. Now, when this happened, I immediately jump in gear. Oh, no, hey, bring your boy here. All oh, right, here. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Now, I ain't about to try to put myself up there like I was Mel's savior. Mel homeboys got in there and got down. When I tell you we roll all them boys out, we roll them all out. Now, I'm standing talking to Mel, telling him, man, you got to get help, bro. We got to take you to medical. This dude will not go get help. And when I tell you Mel was slashed across his eye to his nose, every day I seen Mel, it was scabbing up again. He could clean it, it'll scab up again. Now, because he refused to go get treatment, they would have gave him some kind of cream or something, but now it became a lifetime scar. Now, I'm going to take y'all along the walk back. Now, I just helped male homeboys get him into his cell. Now, it's time for me to walk back to where I got to go. Now, because I got into it with old boy off of L block when he tried to take my weapon off me, I take a whole different route than I learned from male homeboy. Now, as I'm walking back, I come up on this, like, seal office room. Now, before I tell you this next part, I want to show you guys this for all these naysayers saying these type of things don't happen. These things are still happening today. Attorneys for a 21 year old man say he was repeatedly raped by inmates in a detention center guard at a facility in South Carolina. The 21 year old we're told was awaiting trial. The man was facing a drug charge when beginning on August 26, he says he was sexually assaulted on at least two different occasions by four different perpetrators. Strom Law Firm is representing the man and multiple other clients in cases involving reports of abuse and neglect at the jail. One time was unacceptable. This man was subjected to multiple assaults by multiple perpetrators, including an Alvin S. Glenn detention officer. Attorney Bakari Sellers and his colleagues sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Justice in February requesting a federal investigation into issues at the detention center. 
In it, they called the conditions like a war zone and hell on earth. Now, as I was saying, I come to this office. Now, all I can do is hear what's going on. So I'm going to just kind of show y'all what I was hearing. Let's do it, man. Come on. All these dudes that we have to Let's go. go. What's going on? Yeah, boy. Come on up in here, boy. Yeah. Yo, Chris, I'm sorry. Oh. I wasn't really disrespecting you. You man. think I'm sorry? Please, man. Please, please don't do this. Turn the way, brother. Give me a foot to them. outside this door I couldn't believe and it was like four inmates you know I only did the character of two inmates but it was like four or five of them in there and the CEO and they all took turns going inside this man now as if this wasn't bad enough I hear the keys of another CO, so I go duck off on the adjacent hallway and I see another CO go to that room, open the door, see what's going on, close that door back, and walk on this merry little way. He ain't walking like he going to get help. He walk off like, I ain't got nothing to do with that, I ain't see nothing type of look. Real talk. So once that CO got out of sight, I bust back out to my unit. I'm going to take us up an hour and something before lockdown. Big All six right, spin out. Board, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Six so trade. Roll yeah. This. All right. I see you. I see you. Uh -huh. Keep fitting. Bang. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Uh-oh. Okay. There it go. There it go. Now, time winding down, so I'm sitting outside my cell, I'm drawing, you know what I'm saying? Everybody kind of doing what they doing, dudes playing dominoes, dudes playing cards, dudes playing arm to arm. It got all kind of things happening right now. When I hear, there they go, and when I look, I see Skinny and a whole bunch of queens coming. Nah, where that bitch at? Hold on, Skinny, man. Uh -uh. Hey, man you ain't gotta get that one. Get that one. <laughs> Say, when I tell you Skinny came through that bitch vicious, this ain't the same Skinny we used to know. This Skinny is vicious, raw, heartless. For this dude named Dick to get his words out, man, Skinny had to went across his throat and it was over with. Then after he did that, turn around, all the queens turned around with him and walked off just like that. Now I want to take y'all up to when we all on lockdown. Now this situation here, I'm going to do this old school. I'm going to go back old G Street news and tell y'all this story here. Now, this is about Queasy and Lil Man. Now, I come to find out Queasy and Lil Man, they was the prison thieves. But what they end up doing was stealing something from a corrections officer. Now, we all in our racks and we knocked the hell out. Well, I know I was knocked the hell out. You know, so late, all I hear is, ah, ah, ah. Now, Queasy and Lil Man cell was across from mine. So I could see everything that was going on. So when I wake up, I see Sergeant Kraft and Spencer spraying mace in there while the cell's still locked. They spraying mace in there on them. And I'm talking about the bear mace. It's in the canister. So these dudes hollering and choking and they spraying this for a good little minute. Then all of a sudden, you hear the keys come out and they open this cell up. Now, your natural instinct gonna be to come the hell out of there as soon as this open up. So soon as it opened up, that's what little man tried to do. And all you see is Sergeant Kraft take his boot and boom, kick this man swear in his face. He go back into the cell. Now the whole time him and Spencer doing this, they ain't saying a word. So they go in the cell on these dudes. Now Spencer the first one to go for his baton. Now Queasy, not trying to take it from him, he goes for Spencer's hand. You know like a child that go for the belt when your mama whooping you to keep from getting hit with it. But he ain't even paying attention that Sergeant Kraft already got his out and he right behind him. Boom, boom. When I tell you I seen this man head bust wide the hell open, blood and everything fly everywhere. 
up and this man just hit the ground not trying to catch no balance not trying to protect himself from the fall now while all this going on this man in his rack balled up begging now they no queasy no longer a threat cause he on the floor not moving and blood just pouring out his head so they focus their attention on little man now I can still see this lick as clear as day in my head and the first lick came from Sergeant Crap when I tell you I'm not exaggerating guys it's like that lick ain't just knocked this man teeth out his mouth it's like it knocked his gums out his mouth too this man up in there he can't even talk blood just shooting everywhere and they not stopping boom boom Until you no longer heard his screams. And little man, I swear, if he ain't about 5'5", five, five, he's small as hell. Guys, this ain't even the worst part of it all, guys. The worst part of it all, they dragged those guys back in their cell. No medical attention. No, these guys was hurt bad. Now, both of these guys had the long ride. They both had an L. So it's no concern of theirs about their family. So you can tell these families this happened to their loved ones by inmate on inmate violence and nobody gonna think no different. To keep it real, nobody would even hear about it. You guys wouldn't even be hearing about it if I wouldn't be real and tell you about it. So after they beat these guys like that, they dragged these guys back in their cell. And I mean, I must have stayed up all night just thinking and hearing little man moan. But the other one, I I ain't even hear him no more. So after a while, that little faint moaning that little man was doing, that stopped. So the next morning, we all get up and we see medical and the coroners coming into this cell. And they putting these guys in body bags. Now, I come to find out much, much later that these guys ain't have much family. They family been stopped checking on them a long time ago, about 10 years ago. Now, I had to be real with myself because this is one of the stories they told me don't tell. Because no lawsuits was filed on these guys' behalf and they families, just like I said, forgot about them. They just spent so much time going from institution to institution till they just a ward of the state. You just, you just stay proper. Basically what you is But I just couldn't let this go by That's why I didn't do it in store form Like I do everything Because I wanted you to grasp the hardness of this situation Guys this took a lot out of me So I'm going to end this episode right here You know and we're going to get to it on the next one What do investigators plan to do now That this video has surfaced And they're looking into this case Well Heather right now The Georgia investigator Georgia Bureau of Investigators And the Camden County Sheriff's Office Are both looking into this Now I'm told they're going to review Every detail in those videos Not only that They'll interview the people in question Even those who weren't in the videos But were at the jail when it happened 41 year old Jared Hobbs is seen in his cell his attorney provided this video from the Camden County Jail. This is 14 minutes before correctional officers come in September 3rd. You can see Hobbs pacing around his cell in a blanket. At times, he's at the door or sitting down. Attorneys say he was having a psychological episode and banging on the door before officers showed up. You can hear it in this hallway video, which leads to this moment. Eventually, they move outside of Hobbs' cell as the beating continues. He can be heard screaming in pain. Later on, the officers were able to put him in a restraining chair. You can see him being pushed into his bed repeatedly. Then the officers close the door behind him. Afterward, Hobbs is seen tugging at his restraints. This happened 10 weeks before Sheriff Jim Proctor called for an internal investigation. Every officer that was involved in that, every correction officer that was inside that cell that was in the, in the room, even if you didn't lay your hands on him, if you were present, you're going to be called in by internal and they're going to interview you. Kim Varner has nearly 30 years of experience working with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. During internal investigations, Varner says every detail counts. They're going to count each time that they hit him. They'll be able to tell you at the end of that investigation that he was struck a total of you know, three times, four times, however many times he was hit. The investigation, he says, could take weeks or even months. Now, Varner says internal affairs will likely look into the correctional officer's history and check for any red flags. Right now, the sheriff's office has not confirmed if any disciplinary action has been taken against him. Hobbs attorneys are calling for all involved to be fired and arrested. In the newsroom, I'm Tristan Hardy. First Coast News on your side.